Congratulations, you've just summoned a portal from the Earth's core to the moon's surface. So, what happens next? Well, without anything to prevent the immense pressure contained inside the Earth's core from escaping through the portal, you've just managed to summon a 5000 degree molten iron death beam whose velocity we can estimate using the same physics principle that would have gone through the CEO of Ocean Gate's head when he had 4000 psi seawater go through his head a little over the speed of sound and water. Since while well, yes, increasing the amount of pressure on something does increase the velocity it exits an opening at, the effect generally starts to give diminishing ish returns once you reach the speed of sound in that material, meaning that past a certain point their water in the Titan implosion would have always travelled at basically the same speed. And since the iron in the Earth's core is much denser than both air and water, its speed of sound is much faster, at around 8000 ish meters per second, so we can say the beam will probably come out with an exit velocity of around 10,000 meters per second which is still easily fast enough for it to escape the moon's gravity and begin its fall towards Earth, during which time it will further accelerate to at least 13,000 meters per second. The good news is that in almost all cases, the portal will not be pointing at the near exact orientation it would need in order to hit Earth, since surprisingly enough, pretty much the entirety of the difficulty in hitting Earth just comes from the Earth being a surprisingly small target. You might think, so what? Earth's gravity will still pull the beam into us, but surprisingly enough, no. You see, Earth's gravity is nowhere near strong enough. Don't believe me? Here's an actual simulation of 10,000 random possible trajectories the beam can take. And as you can see, even with gravity pulling it in, only one or two hit the Earth. Which again, is only slightly to do with how little gravity Earth produces, and instead is almost entirely due to the Earth being an incredibly small target. But hey, you've messed it up this much, why not have it hit Earth too? In that case, the bad news is that since the moon is tidally locked to the Earth, the same side of the moon always faces us. So we're always in roughly the same position in the moon sky. So every few weeks when the wobble caused by the moon's orbit being slightly out of plane with its axis of rotation causes the beam to line up with Earth, it will effectively create a trail of meteor impacts that sweeps across the planet as it rotates beneath the moon at around the same speed as a passenger plane and assuming a portal from, well, portal, it will be releasing roughly as much energy per second as detonating a nuke that is 200 times more powerful than was used in the first nuclear test. Despite this, it wouldn't be the explosion that deals the most amount of damage to people on the ground, as regardless of the beam's length, it is still only a meter or so across, meaning it falls well short of the 50 or so meters that you need in order to insulate the core of the beam slash meteor enough to be able to reach the ground. So it will instead burn up roughly 50 kilometers above the surface, like most meteors of that radius, which hit Earth surprisingly often, roughly every few months or so. And for reference, here is an actual example of a nuclear bomb of the same explosive power being detonated at pretty much the exact same height above its launch site, and the base and everyone in it were entirely fine, at least from the blast wave. You see, the real damage would instead come from the fact that you now have a beam of light that from the ground is 100 times brighter than the sun, that, rather than lasting for a fraction of a second like a nuke would, is instead continuously scorching absolutely everything in its path for several minutes as it passes above you, not only sending fire to pretty much everything in at least a 50 km radius, but also beginning to melt stone and steel, and blinding everything that looks at it. Except not really, sorry. You see, when the beam leaves a portal, it won't expand forward in just one direction, as without someone to focus the beam into that one direction, such as a converging, diverging rocket nozzle, the iron will also begin to expand outwards at 10,000 meters per second, which is way too fast for the previously solid iron to stay bonded together, meaning that rather than forming a nice tight beam, it instead creates a massive cone of gaseous iron that is spread way too far apart to do any real damage by the time it hits Earth, other than maybe mess with some satellites. Not that that would matter, as even if the death beam was capable of obliterating the Earth, it still wouldn't even come close to being the most devastating effect from the portal, and funnily enough, neither would your odds of being sucked for it. That is unless you plan on waiting for the billion or so years it would take for the Earth to empty out through the portal. Instead, the real damage would come from the Earth's circumference contracting by 1.2 cm per year. While this is smaller than the 2-3 to cm continents normally move each year that cause typical earthquakes, they also mostly move in just one direction, whereas the decrease in the Earth's surface means now every point on every continent is getting closer together, and therefore effectively moving in every direction, everywhere, all at once. This results in a buildup of stress on the continental plates, which is released in a series of massive earthquakes across the globe, and not just in places where earthquakes are already a problem, but just about everywhere in the world, as a contraction of the Earth causes entire continents to bend and shatter into entirely new microcontinents, as a result of gravity forcing them to attempt to lie flat to the mantle. But even the mega earthquakes and the mega tsunamis that they cause will be the least of your worries, as the true planet killer will be the immense amount of pressure being concentrated onto the only thing that is somewhat squishy in the Earth's crust, volcanoes, which will begin to squeeze out and vent this pressure upwards, and a series of volcanic mega eruptions, which will black out the sky with the billions of tons of volcanic ash that they release, blocking the sunlight needed for plants to grow, destroying the entirety of Earth's agricultural capability, and plunging the entire planet into famine. The only upside being, so I guess you were right as a child, about volcanoes being a massive, unsolved existential problem for humanity. 
As for the final fate of our planet, over hundreds of millions of years as the Earth contracts inwards, it will begin to spin faster and faster, and start bulging outwards more and more, as a result of Earth's angular momentum being conserved and concentrated into a smaller and smaller radius, which increases its rate of rotation, until eventually it reaches a point where its outermost parts are moving so fast that they exceed the gravitational force that keeps them bound to the Earth's surface, at which point they will begin to fly off and end to into orbit around Earth, creating an ever-growing accretion disk, while Earth's core will continue to get hollowed out through the portal to reveal Earth's true shape, a donut, which will continue to orbit around its common centre of gravity, although tidal forces from other planets and the moon would probably shred it pretty quick. And finally, for the moral of the story, I'd like to say that this video is quite dense, so to ensure that you actually learn something and will retain that knowledge instead of wasting five and a half minutes, I'd recommend re-watching this video, while reading the fact checking and director's commentary in the description below, which has a bunch of interesting things that I couldn't add into the video, such as why the beam can't release even more energy by fusing hydrogen together, despite releasing multiple times more energy than a nuclear bomb does. I will also be continuously updating the fact checking section as I learn more, which I think is incredibly important to set as a standard in these types of videos, which I just about never see anywhere else on YouTube. I am human and therefore I make mistakes. Anyways, Thanks for watching, and hopefully re-watching this video. Just know that you are loved more than you know, and I hope to see you in the next one. P.S. Even re-watching this video on two times speed should be good enough to remember it all.